So don't be nervous, it's going to be all right. Amen. We really appreciate Elijah. He's coming out of his comfort zone this morning to yeah. do something that I'm really proud of him about because it's not easy. I didn't know I was a celebrity getting introduced like that, but I ain't gonna keep y'all long. I'll get y'all in time for Cracker Barrel. So, I know at least one of us has doubted God before. I've been one of those people who have doubted God, I, I don't know why. And every time I think about it, I just don't like to think about it. I don't know if that makes sense, but... Uh, it's not just a fragment of our imagination. Heaven's a literal place of 12 foundations, walls of jasper, gates of pearl, and streets of pure gold. Y'all can't tell me that don't sound nice. Amen. Amen. God invented in earth in, what, seven days? And just imagine how heaven will be if he's taking his time up there with us. Jesus said, I must be, I must need to be about my father's business. And all that we do is motivated by heaven. Heaven is like, it's unimaginable. I can't imagine being in heaven soon. Amen. And the motivation, like, I know a lot of motivational quotes, but maybe the most good motivational quote in a movie is the Rocky Balboa scene where he said, let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place and it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. That kind of reminds me of this one verse that my dad showed me. And it's Proverbs 24, 16, 18. For those righteous fall seven times. They rise again, but the wicked stumble when calamity strikes, do not glow when your enemy falls. When they stumble, do not, do not let your heart rejoice where the Lord will see and disapprove and turn his wrath away from them. Now, if you, this goes along with the Rocky Balboa and the scene. Now, if you know what you're worth, then go out and get what you're worth. I mean, I say that's pretty motivational, but Deuteronomy 31.6, I think that's a lot more motivational. Be strong, courageous, do not be afraid or terrified, because of them where the Lord your God goes with you, he will never leave or forsake you. I mean, I think that's inspirational enough. Heaven is real to me. I've never been the person to like doubt God, but about middle school hit, I started doubting God if he was real, because I had to think. I didn't like the thoughts I had. They weren't too good. And then I started coming here, and I found my spot. Amen. The truth of heaven ought to do more than just excite us. It should motivate us. I was extremely nervous every day, and Brandon told me this one verse, Luke 12, 12. I was, for the Holy Spirit will teach you at the time you shouldn't say. I mean, Brandon can tell you how nervous I was. Like I text him almost every day saying, I don't know what to do, I'm nervous. I even told my dad and Landon, Almost everybody in the youth group, I told I was nervous. Brandon told me that verse and all the feeling, I, nervous feeling I had just vanished like it was nothing. Salvation is a person named Jesus. The message of Deuteronomy is to listen to God. Obey him and love him with all your heart, soul, and strength. Usually some people already know, but they don't do it. Jesus taught the greatest command everywhere we go. We should seek in God. His attitude should pervade our worship, prayer, Bible reading and relationships. When people say they want something, it's 
sometimes they mean a person. That person could also lead us away from God. The message of Deuteronomy is to listen, obey, love him with all your heart, heart, soul, mind, and strength. I mean, if you think about it, God's never going to leave us. Even whenever he was crucified, got nails in his hands. I mean, all the things that we thought we couldn't go through, God took for us. Deuteronomy 31.7 says, Then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him of, his, of all Israel, Be strong, courageous, for you must go with these people into the land that the Lord swore to their ancestors to give them, and you must divide it among them as their inheritance. The Lord, go, the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave or forsake you. Do not be afraid or do not be discouraged. God never wants us to be worried or scared at any point in our lives. That's why whenever you read the Bible, it says, do not be afraid at least 365 times. The only time you should be afraid is by God. God will always be with us no matter what you've done in your life. Like I said, I used to doubt God. And I used to think he wasn't real sometimes. I was at my lowest point. I felt like all my friends weren't really my friends. And I doubted everything everyone told me. I was always doubting God even, I was always doubting God if I was even real and started doing bad things that I regret. Things I thought I would do, but since I got here, I haven't doubted God. I know he works in many ways, and it's amazing how he works. God knows our needs. Sometimes we are selfish and categorize our wants with our needs. Say that this person has a new phone or a nice pair of clothes. You're thinking inside, I want that. I need that. You don't need it. What you do need is God. I need this job, I need this money, I need this person in my life. God knows our needs. This job that you think you need so bad may cause you to go away from God in church. The money you may cause is more than what it is in the long run. The person you think you need is in your life will, will pull you away from God. Maybe something, maybe someone that has skeletons would, that will drag you down we need to stop praying for what we want and pray for God's will. Yeah. Amen. I can't be the only one who has doubted God. I mean, do I regret it? Yeah, I regret it. But at the same time, I learned from my mistakes. I know that God is real. He will work in many ways. Even when you think you're at the lowest point of your life, think about how God has thorns in his head, nails in his hands and foot, and hung on the cross nearly all day. And on the third day, he rose in you. I mean, sometimes it is hard to believe, but like Brandon said, God's always here, but God. I mean, I love God pretty well. I did some stupid stuff, I'll admit. It's just the way it is. Can't do nothing about it. Faith is believing, not seeing. Take that chair over there, for example. We know it's there. The person sits in it. You think it'll hold up? We don't know. We just put our entire faith that we won't break whenever we sit in it. Yeah. I remember hearing this one story that this one military person had no engine in the car. He was made fun of for believing in God in the military. And the sergeant told him, go move the jeep. 
On the way to the G, the person prayed to God, and it was moving. When he got back, there was pretty much everyone on the military base crying because there was this. The person who told him to go move the G, he showed him that it had no engine in it. That proves God can move wonders for us. Heaven is real. I mean, just imagine how like how awesome it's gonna be up there. God spent seven, six to seven days making heaven, not heaven, making earth. And if He's been up there for two thousand years, just imagine how good it'll be up in heaven. Yes. No one can imagine it. We get hints from it, but we don't know how it's going to be. We know it's going to be good. Yeah. I believe heaven will be better than earth. I mean, I think we all will, but if you think about it, it's just hard to think about the way it is. Y'all know the saying, when y'all know the saying, now I brought you in this world and I can take you out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know my parents know it. <laughs> you love me too much. I know you won't. God will. I ain't gonna keep y'all here long. I know y'all want some cracker barrel though. <laughs> Just imagine how good heaven would be though. Yeah. Middle school to freshman year, I was down God. I didn't feel like I was normal. I didn't know if I was enough. I didn't know if my friends really were my friends. I overthanked everything that everyone had said to me in my life. I started listening to music that ain't good. I thought I was all big and bad until I saw what big and bad truly was. I realized I wasn't nothing like that. The gospel music, you could feel the presence of God country music, you want to go ride a cow, <laughs> ride a horse, I mean. Ride a cow, a horse, what am I thinking about? Amen. I'm going to go back to I'm I'm tired. I'm nervous. I used to listen to rap music every day. Whenever I was down with God, I, I thought I didn't need God. Like, I had time to read the Bible. I think everybody does. Amen. I know Brandon Lee reads the Bible at least five times a day. <laughs> but y'all always saying you don't have time to read the Bible. You're on your phones. Snapchatting, Instagramming, Facebooking, TikToking. I don't know where my sister is, but <laughs> right there. We always had time to put God first before a sports event, before driving. Y'all never know when the last moment of your life is going to be. Amen. I'm. I know people that have been in pretty bad wrecks. Some made it, some haven't. I know, I don't know if they prayed or if they were saved, but I know y'all wanna go to heaven. 
It's hell is real, and it's not too good of a place to be. I can't believe I say cow, man. <laughs> I was thinking of a cowboy for a minute. Oh, man. But when I was listening to rap, I used to always think I was hard, big and bad. I wanted to get into fights in school. I thought I was pretty hard. I mean, my parents can tell you, I've done some stupid crap, not things that I'm proud of, got weapons for it. I mean, <laughs> I was mad this one night and, I don't know, I just punched a hole in the wall. They don't know about that till now. <laughs> see, I'm probably gonna, see some yelling at her in church. <laughs> you are I think mom so. might know about that. I don't know about that. I'm dead now, though. You're digging a hole. <laughs> I mean, they gotta catch me first. They wanna get me. <laughs> Like Brandon told me, Luke 12, 12, for the Holy Spirit will teach you at the same time what you should say. Just that verse, and it's awesome. Like Derek says, it's amazing to be in the house. Since I've got here at this church, I felt like I actually belonged. I've been told Deuteronomy is one of the most motivational, inspirational Bible verses. But, and I saw Romans 1.16, Philippians 4.13. Philippians 4.13, where I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. Just imagine that. I don't mean like I can get into a fight and beat somebody up. He's talking about I can do things for God, and I will do things for God. Yeah. I don't know why I keep looking at my laptop and my notes. I ain't got none of this down now. <laughs> but, yeah. Romans 1, 16. Gosh. That verse is just inspirational. It's maybe one of the most inspirational Bible verses I know. I have a friend of mine from my old church, Jeremy Thompson. He got a tattoo of Romans 116. And like I said, I always doubt in God. I had this one picture on my phone. I was going through my mom's Facebook, seeing about all embarrassing pictures. <laughs> and when I saw that from like 2013, maybe, it's a long time ago. I saw that and my mom said, he adores you, you're his buddy. Jeremy replied, love that little guy. You're doing a great job in raising a son to be filled with hope and love. I honestly couldn't tell you one time I have seen him without a smile on his face. Middle school and freshman year, I barely had a smile on my face. I had a fake smile. When someone asked me I was okay, I said, I'm all right. I said it confidently so they wouldn't ask no follow-up questions. But nobody knew what was in my head. I regret everything I've done like middle school and freshman year. But God forgives us no matter what. Amen. 
I think we've all done things we think we wouldn't have done. But that's how it goes. But God forgives us, gives us strength. What a God. Do not be afraid or discouraged. I don't know about y'all. You people, I was scared. Casey could tell you. Landon could tell you. Pretty much everybody in the youth could tell you. I was nervous. Discouraged. I wasn't really courageous to get up here. Since I was maybe six years old, I also saw this on my mom's Facebook. A video of me preaching in the backyard. Pretty much I wanted to be a preacher when I grew up. In life hit. Things I started doing. Wasn't really gospel wise. Wasn't really Christian worthy. God forgave me. I know he did. Yes, he did. And when I rededicated my life to God in November, I tasted Brandon before I told my parents. Because I was baptized in my old church and it didn't feel right. Here it felt right. God's maybe one of the most inspirational people we'll ever see or meet. Some people imagine what he thinks he looks like. I think everybody imagines what God looks like, what heaven looks like, everything God's created. But dad and God, I hated it. I don't know why I did it. God knew I was going to do it. He knew I was going to come to this church. He knows the future. And just an amazing God. Yes, he is. Just imagine how good heaven will be there. 2,000 plus years, still counting. God knows what you want. He also knows what you need. He gives us what we need. Oh, a Gucci sweatshirt. I want that. I need that. Money. I want that. I need that. No, you don't. You don't need that. The new iPhone. Oh, I need that. No. No, you don't. It's just all about God and like, I get it, it's hard sometimes, especially at some points in your life, it will be hard. But God, He has a plan for you. It's just an unimaginable thing, man. So I don't know how, all right, I'm just going to tell maybe one more joke. <laughs> Y'all know how Adam had his rib taken out? Or uh, Eve. Well, one day after a Sunday school class, 
There's this kid who went home with his mom. He was holding his rib cage, saying how each step. His mom asked him what's wrong. He said, I think I'm getting a wife. <laughs> stuff in my life, my family can tell you. I believe in humor. The youth can tell you that. My family can tell you that. Brandon can tell you that. Pretty much everyone I know can tell you that. Everyone I talk to, at least. But without God in this world, what would it be? The cross, like Christianity, is already banned in over 82 countries, maybe more. That's kind of sad to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just imagine how. I get I keep saying this, but just imagine how good heaven would be. Yeah. Yeah. Unimaginable. Pearls would go in the streets. Walls of Jasper. Man, I don't know about y'all, but that gets me excited. Amen. It motivates me to get to heaven. Everything I'm doing now, I try to do it for God. Amen. I'm trying to break habits that I'm not proud of. Oh. I mean, It's just how life goes. Yeah. I'll say it, but when I started doubting God, I wasn't proud of myself. I, I was being stupid in my actions. I done stupid stuff. But God, I mean, Gives me. I know he does. But if you keep doing the same, Casey and Landon actually told me this. If you keep doing the same thing over and over that you know is a sin, it's probably not going to be forgiven a sin. If you abuse God's forgiveness, no. The only person you should fear in life is God. Like I said, it, my parents say they can take you into this world. They brought you into this world and they can take you out. God's the only one who can do that. one person in my own church. I looked up to him in many ways. Caleb Jackson. He was an athlete, played basketball, soccer. And everything he did, I wanted to be like him. He was my inspiration in the youth group. Like this, he preached on the youth Sunday. He did plays on Easter about how God rose the third day. All the blood that was washed by every sinner. I don't know, it's just hard to believe that God can forgive you for anything. He knows your future. He knows how many hair you have on your head. 
for some it may not be a lot. But. <laughs> He knows what you've done. He knows what you're going to do. He knows what you're going to say before you even say it. Yep. The saying, think before you speak. I don't know where that was invented, but I guarantee you it was from God. Yeah. Pretty much everything invented was from God. Yeah. If you think about it. Because he made humans. Humans made things. They also made things. I don't know what else to say about God. Great person. All around. Good father. I mean, I guess that's it. I don't see no spurs on them pants, but uh, that's all right. I got a belt. You'll get it later. And I will catch it. I'm a pretty fast runner. You know, while he was teaching, uh, brought me to a story uh, about Noah building the ark. Hadn't rained in years. If it don't rain in years, you're going to think, why is he doing that? Why is he building that ark? He got made fun of. People walk by him. Gustin. Say, you're stupid. Why, why are you building this ark when we ain't had rain in years? Because God said, build this ark. Amen. Is our faith that way? Are we following the world so we don't get made fun of? There's all kinds of cancel culture type deals going on right now. Yeah. Yeah. And God's one of them. If you mention the word God or Jesus Christ, you're kicked out. Mm -hmm. You're shunned. But when the rain started falling and that door shut on that ark, then people was begging to get in. It's too late. Yeah. Folks, I, I've witnessed a lot of stuff. Car accidents, whatever. Some of them was actually people leaving the church. If you don't know Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you might not get another chance. As Casey and them come up for invitation, we need to really pray for our young people. Amen. Yes. This was a very good Sunday, I feel like. Yes. I feel like that uh, the youth are under a tremendous amount of pressure. Okay. They're getting pulled in every direction. And for the most part, the church is just standing by and letting it happen. So our youth have feels that they need to follow the world so they don't get made fun of. They're worried about their social media likes. How many likes can I get? If they get five or six likes, they're depressed. If they get 300 likes, oh, I'm, I'm doing pretty good. So we need to pray for our young people. Yes. Don't follow the world. Amen. But follow Christ.
Thank you guys so much. Thank you, you. Oh, you're supposed to take a break, Pastor Brandon. I'll let y'all go ahead.